Hey everyone, my name is Jose, aka Joe Engineer, and today I'm going to show you how to perform a smoke test to check for vacuum leaks on your old air cooled Porsche 911. Thank you all for joining me again on another video. And uh, now it's uh, springtime, weather is nice, driving weather is just around the corner, and maybe you want to get your 911 out from uh, winter storage and uh, you know get it dialed in right before you hit the road or maybe it's running a little weird and you want to uh, know how to get it tuned properly so one of the most important things that you can do especially on a CIS car is uh, do a smoke test to find any vacuum leaks that may be present in the system um, this test applies to really any year of 9-11 um, because any 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 engine will will benefit from uh, sealing all of the vacuum leaks, but it is especially crucial for CIS cars. So anywhere from 1973 to 1983, because the CIS uh, fuel system is a little more temperamental and uh, very sensitive to vacuum leaks. It can't adapt to a vacuum leak as well as uh, some of the later, mo more modern uh, electronic fuel injection systems where you know you take your modern car or really anything with EFI or later, if you have a, vacu a small to moderate vacuum leak, it'll throw a code, it'll tell you warning, warning, car is running too lean or there's too much air in the system or you know something to that extent. Whereas on a CIS car, you don't really get that uh, feedback from the system. It'll just not run at all or it'll run like garbage or it'll be impossible to tune and you don't really know what's going on. So this is a simple way to rule out vacuum leaks um, before you go on to other parts of the tuning process for CIS cars. So what we're gonna do here is essentially take a take some pressurized smoke and put it into the intake system upstream of the combustion chambers and what we want to do is is verify through pressurized air with smoke in it in the system uh, pressurize it ever so slightly so that if there is a, a leak anywhere in the system you will see the smoke start to trail out and that's where there is a leak where you can now seal it replace the part or do what you need to do to to fix it we will find a convenient spot to plug into with a smoke tester essentially a a, a hose that we know has a uh, vacuum in it and then we will seal some of the other parts where the smoke can escape to get it all sealed shut and then we will fill it with smoke and see where it leaks out okay what basic tools will you need to complete this job first and foremost you will need a smoke tester the there are many different ki types of smoke testers out there. Um, if you have access to a professional one, then great, use that. Um, otherwise, there are plenty of options on Amazon and eBay for kind of um, the uh, these amateur level ones. This one I bought a long time ago, I think either on Amazon or eBay, and it's made out of a paint pressure pot. And uh, basically, the way this thing works so that when you're shopping for one, you understand what components to look for is, so the can will need to be pressurized. Uh, it'll need to be able to hold mineral oil. And then it usually has a connection for uh, uh, 12 volt power from the battery. And then that will go to a heating coil that is inside the container and this is essentially just a wire uh, with some cotton fabric or gauze or something wrapped um, uh, that will sit inside of the oil and be saturated so that when you connect it to power, the current will go through the heating coil. It will heat up. It will vaporize some of the mineral oil, turn it into smoke. Uh, then uh, when you input compressed air uh, into it, 
then it will output through a hose uh, the fine smoke that you want. This unit is pretty cool because it has um, uh, a regulator already plumbed into it. I think this is like a 5 PSI regulator, not much, and a little on-off valve and a convenient hook to hang it wherever you want. Um, has a rubber hose and it came with various tips so that you can connect it to different size uh, vacuum lines in the car. And this one, unfortunately, is not super duper well suited for the air-cooled 911 because it has a, a fairly generous power cord, but um, not generous, not generous enough to go all the way to the front of the car and run back over here um, to the back of the car where the engine is. But I'll show you in a bit. There is a spot on, I believe, on the CIS cars and potentially on Carreras as well. There's a spot in the little fuse panel here on the side where we can pick up 12 volts while the car is off so that we can plug it in and run this whole test without um, turning on the car at all. Additionally, to find that 12 volt source, you should have a multimeter as well as a source of compressed air to feed into the uh, smoke tester and various sizes of uh, flattened Phillips screwdrivers as well as some types of various sizes of plugs to plug up all the holes in the system so that you can seal it shut and perform the test. This is kind of up to you, so I'm going to leave this open-ended, and as I go through the process, you will see, um, hopefully get, you'll get some ideas on what kind of things you can use to plug the various holes, whether they be rubber stoppers or little 3D printed plugs or uh, wine stoppers, whatever. So let's uh, follow along and uh, see if that uh, gives you any ideas. So first of all, what you want to do here is um, to make things a little easier to see, remove the air box or rather the air filter cover box thing. Okay. Then, um, if you remember, I think if you're watching this video, you probably have a basic understanding of the way the CIS fuel system works. Um, the engine will inhale the air through here. There is a, there's like a big flapper valve under here that as the air passes through it, lifts this little arm, which then uh, makes a change inside the fuel distributor here. And then, uh, we, and that will send a corresponding amount of fuel depending on the amount of air that is going into the engine. However, this opening here is not sealed shut. So if you go and you connect uh, your smoke tester to any of the uh, lines in the system, you're gonna have smoke pouring out of this opening here and it'll just be confusing. So um, we need to remove the boot um, so that we can seal the system at the throttle body. So here's the flapper valve. And then as the air passes through the flapper valve, it just goes through this rubber boot and it goes down into the throttle body over here. There are a couple of uh, variations of this rubber boot. Um, some of the earlier simpler ones, I think may have zero to one additional connection on the back to another tube. Uh, this one, the, the later, the 1981 to 1983 style has, I think two two or three connections in the back. I'll show you in a bit what those look like, but you will have to undo these two large clamps and connect the other lines that are in the back to it and pull out the whole boot and seal any openings so that it's a, a sealed system and then that we can then begin testing. Before we take off the rubber boot, let's look at some typical areas that you want to be aware of that are uh, potential vacuum leak spots, especially on a car that has not been maintained very well and has really, really old 
rubber parts. On the CIS, cars are a ton of areas where this can happen, unfortunately. So this boot up here could leak uh, just because it's this giant rubber component on top. Um, you're not really going to vacuum leak test this. You're just going to take it off and then you can inspect it for cracks, you know, flex the rubber. And if you see any cracks, replace it. They're not very expensive and you can get them at any Porsche uh, auto parts supplier. I think even potentially even Amazon. Um, all of the CIS cars have these cast aluminum manifolds that have a rubber gasket at the bottom of the airbox right in there. So there's three of those on this bank, three more on this other bank, and at the bottom, the these are mounted to studs on the heads. I mean, you might get a leak under here if these studs are not um, torqued down correctly, but I think that's pretty rare. More than likely, you will see leaks at these, at these seals at the base of the injectors. Again, one per intake runner. One, two, three. Same thing on the other side. Um, other potential leak spots are any of the uh, breather uh, breather hoses that go to the oil tank over here, such as this one um, or this one. Uh, these go to the back of a, there's a big giant rubber manifold back here that you can't see that uh, also can uh, get cracked and leak. As you know, the CIS has various little mechanical air operated valves back here. Um, I always forget what these are called. One of them is an auxiliary air valve and the other one is something else. But anyway, all of these cans are vacuum, have uh, vacuum connections to them and have either tiny vacuum lines like this or are part of, uh, or are connected to larger vacuum hoses connected to this huge rubber manifold that's back here. The oil cap could also um, have a, a leaky seal underneath it, cause you a vacuum leak. You should know the way. Um, one sign of this is, uh, you know, when you're going to go check your your oil, and you have to do it while the car is running. And then when you take off the oil cap, you induce a giant vacuum leak in the car, um, and you should hear your idle change, and then it should recover while you uh, momentarily um, check the dipstick. And then when you pop the cap back on, your idle should change again and then reset back to normal. If you ever change your, if you ever take off your oil cap and the car stalls or idles really, really poorly and is in danger of stalling, then you more than likely have um, a, a car that's not tuned correctly and could potentially have other vacuum leaks in the system. That's one easy way to check. Other leak spots right here, this uh, Venturi is connected to a vacuum port in here on the side of the airbox. And this huge line back here is a vacuum line that goes to your um, brake booster. So this is also, this uses, the brake booster uses vacuum uh, from the engine to help it uh, function correctly. So this could potentially be cracked upstream that way into the car or uh, this way uh, behind the engine. And lastly, for those of you already familiar with CIS cars, um, the airbox, which is typically plastic in most other vehicles, um, a, a popular aftermarket modification for the backfiring uh, condition that happens a lot on these cars during cold starting is to put a uh, this pop-off valve in here so that when the car backfires, it 
relieves pressure here and then it shuts again uh, to maintain vacuum and keep the car running. But these have a seal as well. And if that seal is worn out or if the valve is, if the spring is worn out or if someone did a terrible job of gluing the seal, uh, I'm sorry, from gluing the valve onto the plastic air box and that joint is faulty, that will also introduce a, um, a vacuum leak. So um, lots of lots of sources of, of vacuum leaks here, which is why uh, it's, it's so important to uh, complete this test. So how to remove the CIS upper boot. As I had mentioned earlier, there are two major clamps here, one over the air flapper valve and one over the throttle body. Uh, and there are two more connections here. There is one right, which you can barely see behind the fuel distributor. There's one right. Oh man, I can't see it. Right there. This little guy, which you can access through the fuel lines. You get direct line of sight to that clamp right there, or you should. At least I've set it up that way. So undo that guy, undo that guy, put a tiny screwdriver in here, undo that guy. And I'll show you the one in the back, which is accessible through this side. And you may struggle with this if your car is oily or if you've never been back here, but you can see that connection right there, right in the center. There's a clamp at the base of the rubber boot, which is holding in a aluminum elbow. So you want to undo that one. That one, that screw is pointed directly at us. So that's an easy connection to, to undo. So I've been here, I've been in this area and have replaced this boot multiple times in prior uh, tuning and vacuum testing, etc. Uh, smoke testing. So I already have the clamps preset in a way that is easy to access them. If you don't and yours are pointed in other directions, you may have to get creative and undo them how, however you can, putting your hands back here. Uh, but when you put the boot back in place, remember to put the clamps in a um, easily accessible orientation for uh, the future. First grab a normal, I guess medium sized flathead screwdriver to undo the, the two large clamps holding on the boot to the throttle body and the flapper valve. Then get a tiny, narrow uh, flathead screwdriver to undo the clamp behind the fuel distributor to get in between the fuel lines. Then get a plastic trim tool to pop off the, the boot from the top of the air box reach back and pull off the other clamp that you just did behind the fuel distributor, then come around. And this might take a bit of practice, but you can get in there one-handed and undo the clamp for the last connection behind the boot. Might take some practice, but you can do it. Oh no, I dropped the screw. Don't do that. So after a little bit of fishing, I was able to find the screw <laughs> that goes to this clamp. Do yourself a favor and uh, when you remove these, only loosen them. Don't take the screw out all the way because then you'll drop it back there and there's endless obstructions in the way and you'll have a hard time finding it. So lesson learned. Okay, just to show you guys the various connections that are on here. Here's the boot. It was oriented like this. I was able to access the screws here and here. Here's the other one that was at an angle over there. And then here is the rear one, which has a screw head over here that I was able to access this way from the backside. 
Uh, some of the earlier cars, I believe, only have one. Uh, one connection, not both. Um, potentially zero, I'm not 100% sure. But there are ver several variations of this, so make sure you poke around yours and make sure that you uh, know all the connections that are present before you start yanking on it and potentially uh, messing something up. As I mentioned before, once you have this one off, you know, uh, inspect it, make sure there are no cracks or, or um, other uh, places of potential vacuum leaks. Fortunately, this unit is pretty new, so I don't really need to worry about it. This is just, we're taking this off for demonstration purposes. Also, to show you, now you have a clear view of the throttle body and the flapper valve in here. And the reason why you can't just seal, the reason why you gotta take off this boot is the flapper valve has, there's the flapper there, it has a small gap all the way around the perimeter. So uh, it doesn't quite make a tight seal. There's a little gap there. So if you just hook up the smoke tester, you'll have smoke pouring out the bottom and you'll have a a, uh, you won't have an accurate test and then you have this connection back here which goes to your oil breather right there and this connection which goes down to this the manifold that has all the vacuum stuff like these guys so we got to plug you got to plug that guy that guy and the throttle body let's plug these two guys you can get creative with whatever you have. Um, I have successfully just shoved some rubber gloves way in there and uh, that has worked before for me. Um, in this case, I found, I have a lot of random hardware laying around and I was able to find a couple of rubber stoppers to shove in there. You could probably find some on Amazon. Uh, these had holes in them, so I just put a bolt uh, hand tight on there and uh, I should be able to just sort of press these guys in here and that should be good enough for this test since we're, I don't expect them to shoot out since we have pretty uh, low pressure air that we're gonna be running in here. So that should work. And I'll show you how to plug that guy. Sometimes I'll shove a rubber glove over here and um, as you're running the test it will start to inflate so I'm gonna see if I can put a rubber glove over here and zip tie it shut so that it stays uh, firm easiest way to do this is to grab a heavy-duty rubber glove and take the glove opening and put it around the outer diameter of the throttle body then take the rest of the glove and just lay it flat over the top of the throttle body opening, then zip tie it shut so that it's as flat as possible, almost like the top of a snare drum. And that should hold it. Once you've got your system sealed up with this plugged, this plugged, and this uh, covered up with the rubber glove, you wanna go ahead and find a convenient spot to connect the, the vacuum tester. And for me, this size, this particular tester has uh, this size of hose. I don't know what diameter this is, maybe like half inch or something, but it's a good size for the brake booster uh, hose right here. So I'm gonna undo the clamp, remove the, the car side hose and connect the tester directly to the um, intake side of the hose. So now we've got the vacuum tester hose connected over here. It's not, hopefully it doesn't leak. I mean, you could put a clamp over here if you wanted to. Uh, 
Um, but I've used this successfully before. And now we need to find some power for the tester. So if you undo this panel here, I've already removed the screw here on the bottom. You can find a convenient spot to grab 12 volts. Should be on one of these guys. We'll check right now. Multimeter connected to ground somewhere on the engine. Bolts. So on any of these, on the SC, there are three, three fuses back here. And I think if you grab any one of these posts, 12 volts, next one below, 12 volts, next one below, nothing. Okay, so the top two. That one is live, the one in the middle, and the one above is also live. So we're going to connect the tester here. Remember the key is not in the ignition, the car's completely off. So this is where we're going to grab power. Got power. Now we need some compressed air. Oops. This is a very awkward shape. I kind of don't like the way this is set up, but it it works. So we are set up and ready to test. Power is connected. This is connected to the vacuum line for the power steering. Everything is sealed up. We're just going to wait a little while and let this um, is warming up. Wait a little while for the smoke to get generated in there. If you want to see the smoke, kind of smoke we're working with, let's disconnect this real quick and we'll take a look. Open this valve. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Closed valve. Connect this back on. Now we're ready to test. So when you're ready to test, crack the valve a little bit and keep an eye on everything in here. This is gonna to start to inflate a little bit. As you can see. At this point, look around for any, any leaks. Give it Remember, you've got very low pressure air in the system. Give it a few minutes, look around, make sure you have decent lighting. See a little bit of smoke coming out of the connection where I put the hose on here. So I need to put a clamp on here to seal the system.
So I ended up putting on the clamp that was on the power steering vacuum line uh, on the end of my tester hose right here because it was leaking here slightly. It wasn't very well sealed. So now, now it's on there pretty good. Let's repeat the test and see where, where we leak. So now it's open slightly. I can hear the air in the system. And I'm looking for, looking for leaks. I don't see anything significant. But you'll see, if you have any significant leaks, you'll see a little wisp of smoke somewhere. And those are the areas that you'll have to address. For example, see? That's what you'll see. Blow the smoke away. Keep looking around and look for leaks. As you can see, my pop-off valve is leaking slightly, but it's leaking at the at the seal. So that tells me I need to either replace the seal or regrease it and check it again. Once you've found a significant leak, there'll be smoke everywhere. So just kind of blow it away, let it, let it clear out. Maybe turn off the tester so it's not generating smoke. And keep looking around until you find a leak. Trust me, if they are there, you'll definitely see them. Anyway, that's the test. That's all there is to the, the, the smoke test. When you're done, reconnect everything up here and uh, you should be good to go. To button everything back up, disconnect the power to the smoke tester. Then go ahead and remove the smoke tester hose from the vacuum hose that it was connected to and secure the vacuum hose back uh, the way it was before you attach it to the smoke tester then go ahead and just pull off the zip tie and the glove off the throttle body Remove the two rubber plugs on the remaining lines behind the airbox. And now grab the boot and reinstall it over the top of the airbox. Here you want to be very careful with all of the clamps, especially the large diameter clamps over the throttle body and the flapper valve opening because you want to make sure that the lip over every single opening is securely attached to the top of the air box that you don't have any uh, leaks uh, of any kind um, so make sure you attach that securely double check everything all the way around then reconnect the two connections at the back grab the appropriate screwdrivers so that you can access the clamps and make sure that you orient the clamps in a way that is easy to access them the next time you have to get back uh, in there and remove the boot once again. If you do this enough times, eventually you'll be able to remove the connections at the back with your eyes closed. Give everything a quick tug, make sure it's firmly attached. Then put the cover back over the fuse panel and attach with the correct fasteners.
Lastly, put on the air filter and the air filter cover and attach it securely to the top of the air box using the rubber straps.